Now I can honestly say that my current bag setup is as messed up as it's ever been. Testing golf clubs for a living is a great job, but it comes with its problems. And the main one being the selection of my own golf clubs, which is a constant dilemma. And keeping that bag consistent, I've tried all year to do that as best as possible. And so far I have failed miserably. So on Friday in the Pro-Am, I kick things off. I am on the 10th tee, which means we're gonna go with a driver and these are the two that I need to decide between. So those drivers in question both are from TaylorMade but they are quite different to be honest with you. I've got the Stealth 2 HD, a nine degree head, this Pro Force shaft which is shortened by one inch and to be honest with you it's performed really really well so far but again in recent weeks I took delivery of the new Burner Mini driver. Now this thing has been, I can't really recall missing too many fairways, shorter shaft again, but interestingly enough, the standard shaft that comes in the mini driver is a pro force. We've got a smaller head, we've got 13 and a half degrees. And what I'm questioning is around the course that I'm gonna be playing on Friday at Hollywell, it's not overly long. Is it more about accuracy? And should I be swayed towards the burner over the Stealth 2 HD? We're going to hit a couple off the 10th and I'm going to make a decision. Well, that's just absolutely flown. It's the exact line and shape that I'd want and that's bounding down the fairway. Nine degree head, don't forget, more penetrating ball flight than what I'm expecting to see from next up, which will be the mini driver. But if we were basing on one drive alone that doesn't get any better from me, and I'd love to hit that one, off on Friday. I mean, first of all, more confidence just because I am closer to it. So I'm thinking that uh, I'm gonna find the fairway. I'm not feeling as uh, exposed as I did with the longer shaft of the HD, but I already know it certainly isn't gonna go past that. Now, as you can see, a totally different ball flight in terms of the launch of the I'm just trying to see how far that's gone down and whether or not that bounds on or not. My guess would be it's gonna be a lot shorter simply by uh, difference in launch angle. The mini driver with that 30 and a half degrees pops the ball up. Ball speed seemed good. And I really wanna go down there and just see where they are side by side. But the feeling is in terms of distance, accuracy, and all out, which was the better shot based on them two, the HD won that one hands down. Well, do you know what? That's really interesting. The bit that always surprised me about the mini driver, which is right by my feet. And the ball that we hit with the HD is down that left hand side. Probably a slightly better angle as it is from that ball there. But I really felt there was going to be a huge difference because of, like I said, the much lower ball flight out of the HD. I thought was going to kick on on the firm ground that we've got on the foot. This one has come through the sort of mounds a little, which is again is softer ground and still made it to here, which arguably is five yards shorter than that of the HD with nine degree head and that extra one inch in the length of shaft. So clearly there is a decision to be made. Right, we're gonna stay in a position that uh, we found ourselves with the drive uh, from the mini driver because it is dilemma number two and it's probably where I go to next in the bag. I've already mentioned this selection of clubs will be based on the course that I'm playing which means I'm not gonna go with a three wood and I'm not gonna go with a five wood either because very rarely am I gonna need those two clubs to be honest with you. Um, so the next club up for me is gonna be a fairway wood with a lot of loft and you know that decision is gonna come down to either a seven wood or in this case, the Callaway Paradigm Heaven wood. There's not many opportunities to sort of get up in two on a par five and this would be one of them. <coughs> and this is a possible selection that we'd be looking for in this scenario. And that's because it just does that so well, so easily. Are we gonna get up is the question. Yeah, we are. My God, I'd take those two shots on Friday. That's, do you know what? We're probably, we're, we're 10 foot for eagle there on the first hole, if that would be the case. But the Heavenwood is such a good club because 20 degrees aloft, don't forget bigger head than you'd normally see on a seven wood and also a longer shaft. 
So for me, in a distance wise, it's sort of a 200, 200 yard plus club, but then you can do a fair bit with it in terms of take a little bit off in terms of uh, club head speed. You can pop the ball up, you can hit that one just a little bit lower. So a really flexible club in the bag. The other option is a seven wood, which will have a play from with the next ball from the same position. It's a seven wood from a gen six lineup. And the reason I like it and why it's a, it's a, it's an option is because one, I was custom fit for it, and that being the main one on that shaft option is probably a better suited shaft than what is in this paradigm. Let me go and grab that. That shaft, by the way, is a 10 side blue. Um, and yeah, the, the way this thing looks from above is, is really nice. And yeah, it's a tough one, a tough decision based on looks. I prefer this thing, but obviously we're looking at performance. So let's see how we get on. God, do you know what? I, I don't know whether this thing's providing me more questions than answers, to be quite honest with you. Because we've just took a ball that is right by the flag. Uh, and I'm so shocked and confused already. I've tried driver and I've tried the sort of longest fairway wood in the bag. And still, I am very much unsure about which one to play. Now, I think we'll start this thing off by talking about the clubs that are definitely staying in the bag. No doubt about this one, no confusion. I think you can all probably guess it, but the Mez putter from Lab Golf is a no brainer for me. It's an interesting one because I've been switching out, doing different videos for different brands in recent weeks and uh, trying different putters or reviewing different putters. And I hate that because coming back to the Mez, it's almost like starting again. It's very much its own thing in terms of the principles behind this. And every time I get back on the first green or the first putt, I sort of have to relearn how to use it. But once I've done that, I just cannot believe how good this thing has been in my hands. That's, gee, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Well, all I can say is there's two reasons why, uh, well, that's two reasons why this putter isn't going nowhere. I just hope it manages to do exactly the same in the Pro-Am. So the debate with the wedges is a slightly different one in that, first of all, I've been using Mizuno S23 wedges for quite some time. I love the way they feel. Um, I love the full shots with these things and I love the versatility around the short game area. But the dilemma is not so much as what wedge because it is going to be the Mizuno S23. It's what loft of wedges and what do I potentially couple it up with? And this is a prime example of where I've got a 50, 60 degree wedge, which could play a very straightforward shot to this pin at Hollywell. That straightforward shot would be to lob the ball up in the air and hopefully feed it out to the hole, which wasn't a bad effort, but there is another option that we could perhaps put in. And I think you'll know what that might be. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf mega store, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. And it is, of course, the trusted chipper. I've got to be honest, this one got dropped out of the bag for quite some time because I brought it into the bag where my confidence with, was particularly low with my short game. I then built my confidence up using the chipper and I went back to using standard wedges. Whether I did the right thing or not, I'm not 100% sure because what I do know is I have not really holed out any of these type of shots since I went back to standard wedges. And in recent weeks, this one has crept its way into the bag, but it lacks versatility. So should I go with the 56 and then maybe put this in as well, especially when you consider the type of course that we're playing and the type of terrain the Hollywell is. Obviously it's a lot lower flight that comes off the chipper and on this kind of terrain, like I said, there's no, or 
very few bunkers there may be one only one bunker on this course up at Hollywell that I can recall so a lot of the shots are very much like that where you um, nothing in the way and uh, as Lewis famously said only an idiot chips over nothing and with that in mind I think what I'm going to do is mix up a 56 wedge but also include the chipper as well the dilemma over golf ball is an interesting one i've always been very much an advocate of the seed well sd1 sd02 either of those golf balls in terms of value for money and uh, versus performance has been superb it's the ball i generally play but i've got to admit there's a golf ball that arrived on my doorstep just a few days ago it's a callaway chrome soft ball first of all which is an exceptional golf ball but comes with a fairly hefty price tag as well but it's a true viz and I've never really paid a great deal of attention to them. They've got a number of balls that have got several different patterns on them right now and uh, the triple track being one of the most prominent ones of those. But I've started using this and I really, really like it. Not for its performance attributes um, in terms of control, spin, distance, all those things you'd associate a golf ball with, but because of this pattern. The first one being is for an alignment aid in terms of your putts. It's very, very good to, first of all, line the putt up, and second, encourage a little bit of a training aid in terms of a forward roll. I've mentioned that in a recent video. And then the second thing is, which I'm really noticing, and I spoke to Hannah about off camera, is there's a particular pattern on this Truviz, and I really like to know what it's designed to do because it's really standing out um, on the fairway in the putting situation at address at whatever position i suppose in being a real sort of strong visual that is very different than just your normal white golf ball at address and for whatever reason it's really working in terms of my concentrating on strike i really want to know what that pattern is and whether it's intended to do that or not but my feeling is for the pro-am on friday i'm going to put this pro-am truvis in the bag and see if it helps me in any way. A golf ball helping you, I don't know. Right, now we're gonna have a look at what is a real difficult situation for me personally, and that's irons, because I've had this same irons in the bag for quite some time. They've been PXG, I've gone from Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, and Gen 6 irons. But those of you eagle-eyed and watch the channel quite frequently will know in recent weeks I've had a different iron in the bag and each time I've gone out, um, the relevance of what I've been reviewing, the same irons have stayed constant and that has been a PXG iron but it's the 0317CB. It's a forged, I don't know whether you call it a cavity back kind of iron, it's certainly a bit of muscle back iron. Um, more traditional in terms of more like a blade far removed from the gen 6 in many ways really in terms of the bulk and the mass thinner top line shorter profile heel to toe all those kind of things probably what you'd call a better player's iron one that i've personally avoided over recent years but one thing i've noticed in recent years is this type of iron has become more and more forgiving and having played it in the last sort of three four weeks or so I'm really loving the way it's performed. First of all, because of its size and profile, really suits my eye. In the past, I've always been a player that's played blades from 30 years ago, and this kind of thing now is really appealing to me. Now, when you consider, I wouldn't be thinking about putting anything longer than perhaps say six iron, five iron in maybe, and then going into hybrids, then I feel as though I can control this kind of club between a wedge and a six iron. So it's a real interesting one for me um, personally. Anyway, this is choice number one or option one. What I'm slightly concerned about is just the difference in lofts and how much distance I'm potentially losing in this 0317 CB. Playing into the wind, it's 154 to the flag and I'm using a six iron. OK, 
Okay, so slightly left of pin, but a really good ball flight. It's getting there. It's not, um, it's not launching too high, that ball. And to be honest with you, from a performance perspective, it's done everything it's been doing over the last few weeks, which is um, quick enough ball speeds. Either I'm finding the center quite often or it's forgiving, one or the other, I don't really care. Um, and it's a nice controllable ball flight. I can do plenty with it. So that's option one. And like I said, option two is of course that Gen 6 iron. If I can find it in a bag, it's just hiding here around the back. Now this is a bit bulkier. Um, they both got exactly the same shaft in, but I was custom fit for the Gen 6 in terms of this weighting system. And potentially that it's tungsten that's in that back end and potentially it offers more forgiveness, more ball speeds. And I'm not really too bothered about that to be quite honest with you. So what I'm expecting is, um, well, I'm expecting this to go a little bit further as being the first thing, perhaps a little bit of a flatter ball flight due to the fact that uh, it's stronger lofted than the 0317. Well, a ball fight, not too greatly different, to be quite honest with you. It's got more at the flag, and it looks to be pretty close uh, near the flag, to be quite honest with you. So, in terms of shot for shot, there's no doubt about it, the Gen 6 performed better, but it's the fact that it went straighter. In terms of its overall performance, in terms of where it carried to, quite surprising that there was no great difference between the two. The ball flights weren't too dissimilar, slightly higher on the 0317, but then again, not necessarily a negative. So it's a real tough one for me. I'm going to switch up and hit two short irons, a wedge and a nine iron, which effectively have the same loft, and just see where we feel over that one. But this is this is a big dilemma for me. But just great control. That's, I'm going to start this one off with the 317 CB. Again, just from my own uh, swing there, just stayed straight down the left. Not sure on alignment. The ball didn't deviate in terms of uh, a drawn or a fade. I'm just hitting a 99 and a 317 CB because I'm expecting the wedge definitely to be stronger and uh, trying to match the two up in terms of that Gen 6. Happy enough with that, but just a real great feel that comes out of these. And uh, again, I just love that neat profile, especially down that shorter end when that's what kind of I am looking for that shaping. They did a real good job of in terms of making it all more compact, thin top line, kind of wedge that you want in your hands, right? Let's try the same shot in the Gen 6. And to be honest with you, I mean, it's still a compact profile in the Gen 6. It's something that I do like, so I'm not suggesting that this is gonna put me off. And again, that's a much higher ball flight. It's online, which is the interesting thing. That's again, just gonna come up a tad short. We maybe pitched ourselves just too far away in terms of uh, distance. The interesting thing is on both of the shots that I've played, uh, I've been straighter with the Gen 6. And I'm just wondering just how much this weighting system in terms of how that was dialed in to fit me at that custom fit is playing a part in that. And uh, maybe, Maybe it's just swaying me towards what I know rather than shift out to something that still maybe I've got a little bit of uncertainty in. I'm not even gonna make a decision right now. I'm gonna to stick to the end of the video before I decide which iron I'm gonna plumb for. Do you know what? I don't want to be pleased or absolutely fuming in many ways because uh, I will not do that when it matters on Friday. That's incredible. This ball here was the PXG ball and seriously, that's rolled right past the hole and I had a, uh, a chance of going in, but I had to take either of them and both got realistic chances of, uh, of an eagle putt. Right, decision to be made, but we've got to move on to some other deliberations. Right, before we go on to the next deliberation, I think I mentioned there's a couple of clubs that are kind of certainties to make the bag. And uh, one of them is, uh, well, what will be my longest iron equivalent, if you like, and that's gonna be a five hybrid, which is definitely going in the bag, simply because it's become very much a go-to club, something I've become really reliant and dependent on. 
typical one par three 165 into the wind what should happen is a nice easy swing it's that uh, 0311 xf in the gen 6 model and the all important part for me is the fact that it carries that tensai blue shaft which i was custom fit for and goes back to what i said about the seven wood that we had a look at so let's see a bit of a shot tracer on and uh, see if it does as well as i've just suggested it should a curse I still can't believe just how well we've just done on a par five. Right, into the breeze a bit. Oh, it's just a super ball flight. Again, a little bit of a pull down the left, which is something clearly I'm going to have to work on between now and Friday. But it does what it says on the tin in terms of 25 degrees. I mean, launches the ball super high. It's got uh, plenty of ball speed. And that one, oh, a fantastic shot. But for me, that's a no-brainer. That's definitely in the bag. Right, so we're going to go back to driver for a bit. And uh, another par five. And to be honest with you, it's a hole that is fairly tight. It's not overly long. And uh, I would argue that position is key as opposed to distance. So I'm just wondering on this hole, first of all, what would I rather be have in hand, the mini driver or, or in fact this? And I think my initial thoughts are maybe more confidence in the mini driver, which is a bit strange, but yeah, I am definitely a fan of control and I feel I lose a bit of that with the longer driver shaft in hand. But I can't knock this thing. I mean, that is just, again, well, it's middle of the fairway and I'm almost, uh, well, it's slap bang in the middle of the fairway. I'm almost frustrated at the fact that I'm hitting this so well. It's making the decision really, really hard. But since I've had this HD head, you'll see there's a little bit of curvature in that ball from left to right, but it's minimal. I've got a lot of control over it. And uh, yeah, why am I afraid of using this club? I should be really confident in it. Right, let's try the mini driver. Now, first of all, I tear up lower with the mini driver. And again, <laughs> I know it sounds daft, but um, I just feel less exposed in terms of that control element. I don't know why. That does sound silly, but yeah, it is what it is. Right, greater control. Do I find the center of the face and how far are we gonna be behind the HD? Well, that's interesting enough. That has leaked down the right hand side. Well, that would result in a lost ball. All my waffle about control with the shorter shaft went up in smoke. And we've got a ball that I couldn't place any better down the middle of the fairway and the other one with the one that gives me all that great control and confidence it's just been lost well maybe i was a little bit negative on the mini driver we didn't quite lose it but the gorse is very very close and i don't know whether i've just got a bit of a bouncing because it certainly seems to be going that way to me but the thing i've put the camera back on for is that is the mini driver and down in the distance which we'll try and highlight for you now is the driver i mean we're talking we're talking potentially 60 yards difference. Obviously the fact that it found the fairway and bounded on has made a huge difference anyway, but either way, you know, that is a going for the green in two, another chance at Eagle, and this one is not. It's that simple. So yeah, huge difference there in the distance, the performance, everything about that. But I'm gonna play another um, one of our seven wood, heaven wood deliberations from this position and see what it does. Phenomenal balls like that, you know. There's just nothing to split them to at all, is there? Do you know what, I thought this was going to be a very simple and straightforward exercise. Obviously the decision I'm making is not based on just today's performance and a few shots that I've hit. This is based on sort of weeks and weeks of testing. But like I said, clubs coming in and out of the bag. And there are some bits that I'm still really confused in and probably will report more after the Pro-Am has finished in a part two of this video. 
But going back to the lower end of the bag, the Mez is a certainty. I am going to go with a 56 degree wedge in that Mizuno S23, and I am going to put the chipper in as well. Then into the irons from uh, gap wedge through to a six iron, the likelihood is I will play with the 0317 CBs, which is probably one that a decision I didn't expect to make. And then into hybrids, we already know that Gen 6 is going to be there. And that was a five hybrid, by the way. But then that mixed bag in between is the one where I've got the biggest deliberation to make. I'm still not sure. There's no five or three wood. They're definitely not going in. But it's that mix up of seven woods, heaven woods and hybrids. It's going to have to wait for a few more days testing. It's Tuesday now. Pro-Am is Friday. I need a little bit more practice. But the big decision that has been made is with the driver. And based on that last one that I've just hit, I cannot ignore just how much more distance I'm getting with that Stealth 2 HD. So that's the driver that's going to be in play. And the ball that I'm going to use is also going to be that Chrome Soft truth is i love that pattern and uh, yeah i actually think it could help me shoot better scores yeah a golf ball i know sounds a bit daft but that's what i'm going to go with we're going to do part two of this next week i'll do a report on how i have played in that pro-am and then we've got another pro-am the following friday and just how much change there is going to be made into this bag setup i do not know but i leave probably as you do a little bit confused right Thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow night.